smash the side of his head like this, maybe you look like somebody that beat him up in their third grade, okay? You should not be on the ground beating him, slamming his head against the concrete. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to my YouTube channel. Today, we'll be working on close quarter combat situations. Let's get started. First, always use your gut instincts. Gut instincts are key into a street situation. So for instance, when somebody, you're at, you're at a club or you're out on the street, somebody's acting funny, body language is the first step to understanding what is going on. One of the biggest mistakes people make is they don't realize they're already in an altercation. They're still emotionally, mentally not there. And so you need to first start off by learning how to identify violent altercations. You need to be able to learn how to turn on that switch, that switch that says, I am in a situation and I need to take charge. That starts with a mind, body, spirit uh, control mechanism, a switch. We have to flip it on and be ready to go because the truth is, is that when somebody comes into your space and they decide that they want to try to uh, uh, push their ideology or to push their will onto you, they've already made that choice. You haven't. So therefore, you have to learn how to identify when a violent altercation is going on, when somebody's getting aggressive at you, and when it's time to take charge. That is the key. So the first thing that I want you to understand is, is that when I call it the bubble, okay? Understanding that you need to have a bubble, a decision that if a person comes into your space and they first are verbally trying to get, say something to you, they're verbally trying to, uh, uh, they're telling you that they're gonna hurt you, they're telling you, or it's body language. Their body language tells you that there's something seriously wrong, that they're gonna try, that they're gonna hurt you, or they're up to no good. You know, you need to know this, the laws for your state, but in the state of Florida where I'm at, you are allowed to take charge and with somebody, if you feel violent or you feel threatened for your bodily harm or someone that's with you, you have the right to stand your ground and fight back, okay? So when the judge asks you what was wrong, you then are able to say, I felt threatened for bodily harm or my, my loved one felt threatened for bodily harm and you have the right to fight for yourself. You have a right to stand your ground and, and take care of yourself within means. That's the next step understanding within means that means that you're not going to sit there and beat them to death okay you're gonna you're gonna only be there you're going to take the situation to the level needed so that they're no longer a threat that is a very important part to what this is all about you need to understand that you have to control yourself if you lose your temper that's wrong Okay, you need to be able to maintain your state of mind and your emotions at all times. If you start losing your temper and you lose yourself, then there's a serious problem, okay? And you're taking it to another level that's not needed. You have to take care of yourself and your loved ones. That is the most important thing. So keep that in mind when we're talking about violent altercations, okay? So, <clears throat> The first thing you want to do is pay attention to somebody's hands and see how they're standing. Okay, so for instance, George comes into the film. When I look at when I look at him, first of all, I don't want to be this close. So he backs up just a little bit. Okay, you know, the first thing is is, is if somebody comes in this close at you and they're saying things and there's an altercation taking place, the first thing you need to understand is the violent the the violence has already started. It may not be physical violence, but it's verbal violence, it's body language violence. There, you have to need, first be ready. So you need to pay attention to their hands. You need to pay attention to where their hands are first. And what's, is there any bulges coming out of the side of their, on their hips? Are they carrying a weapon? Are their hands some specific way? Okay, that's the first thing. Are they tilted if they turn their body? So if they turn their body like this, okay, and they, they, their teeth are grinching that right here in their facial expression are they biting down their teeth are they showing aggression are there are their fists 
balled up. These are all very important things you need to know right away that this, this has gone from social situation to now a violent situation. So this is called the interview stance, okay? And so we have our hands out here like this. This, this right here a lot of times will stop a person from wanting to throw because they know your, their hands are already ready. If his hands are down and my hands are here, that means that I'm, I can engage them quicker than they can, okay? Because I can go right into my center line and I can take charge, okay? So that's a very important principle to all of this, okay? Now, from this position, if you feel, if they start to crunch up or you can tell that they're starting to, to shake like this or they're trying to get move like that, you bring your hands up into this position. What does this say in the court of law? In the court of law, this says, I surrender or I don't want to fight, okay? If you ball your fists up like this, that means you want to fight, okay? And in, in any witness that sees this, they're going to go, oh, if they, their, your hands are like this, they're saying, oh, that they both were squaring up, okay? But if I go like this and I go, oh, you know, I don't want any issues, you know, we can de try to de-escalate the situation. If they attack, they, then they're really breaking the law. They're the whole thing is they're breaking the law, okay? I felt, you tell the judge, I felt threatened for bodily harm, okay? I felt like somebody was gonna hurt me. That's very, these are very important principles. So my hands are up like this, okay? So let's switch sides. When my hands are up like this, I understand I've got to take charge. My hands are up like this. Now what's gonna happen, my elbows are in, just like this, my elbows are in, my hands are up, okay? I understand now if they throw an attack, usually they're going to try to do a surprise attack. But I'm going to tell you, in my experience, from even from this or this, they don't want to throw an attack anymore because they already know that you have you may know something. It makes them feel uncomfortable. They want to always have the advantage. This is a very important principle when it comes to combat. They always want to have the advantage. They're going to try to distract you, maybe even have a friend distract you. You've got to stay in focus. Okay, so your hands are up, just like this. Elbows are in, okay? This is the first part of this whole thing. Now, if they throw an attack, the whole idea is they throw an attack, it's usually going to be a round attack. Okay, so we'll go back on this side. Okay, so I'm in my position. When he throws that round punch, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in straight just like this. You see this? This hand is going to go to the eyes, okay? This hand right here can wrap up on the bicep, okay? This is, we call this, we, go, we call this clashing, okay? I want to, cla I'm clashing with this person, okay? Now, in my, some of my other training, I may teach you, you know, if somebody throws a round punch, you can cover, and then you do, you know, you could do a different set, series of combinations. Yeah, that's, that's true. You could do that. But sometimes in violent altercation, that's not the way the pressure is going to take place. The pressure is going to take place. They're going to give you a lot of forward energy. And when you do, when you do, when they do that, you've got to use other techniques because this use being able to throw, you know, boxing is not going to necessarily going to be the right way to go all the time. Okay. Because if they give you, you're give, they're giving you four really hard for pressure. Now we're going to be in a clinch position. Now we're going to be in a different type of energy. The first way I'm going to show you is when he throws a punch, I'm going to come in like this. Notice I'm coming in like this. Okay. My hands are up. This hand's going to go to the eyes. Okay. This hand's going to wrap the arm. So we go here, boom. Okay. Now, if you want to, you can also go cover like this. This hand comes up like this. This covers up depending on how far away they are. Now, right now, we're pretty close. So they come in, boom, I come right into the eyes right here. Move your hand so they can see. <laughs> see, because I taught my student the right way. He's got his hands up, that's the right way. So my hands come up, goes right into his eyes, and, I, and I'm gonna cut and scrape this, okay? My arm's gonna wrap just like that. What's gonna happen after I cut to the eyes here, I'm gonna drive my hand up underneath the chin, knocking him down. It's gonna bring, his, bring him down to the ground. That should be it, okay? You need to understand that should be it. You should not be on the ground, beating him, slamming his head against the concrete. That's not what I'm teaching you. I want you to understand that. The idea is that you protect yourself. You bring your hands up, your elbows are tight, and you bring your hands up. You can cover with this hand if you want, but you can have both hands up, you wrap, with one hand, this shreds the eyes. 
we drive the, the palm to the here, okay? And then, and then kick out a leg if you want, or you can just go there and push off, okay? They're gonna be here. They're gonna be, they're gonna go into visceral response. The visceral response is I'm gonna grab my eyes and go, ah, you know, okay? When I scrape, when I go across the eyes, that's all they're worried about now. I drive underneath the chin a couple times till they're no longer a threat. They're not fighting anymore. They're, they're hurting, okay? That's when you would stop the fight. That's when you walk away and you, you know, you do whatever you think is right. Call the police or whatever the case may be. You do whatever you think is right, okay? So what I want you to do at home is you start off your hands with your hands together like this, okay? And we go from this position, okay? My one foot's in front of the other, okay? You're not surfing, you have some space between your legs, okay? Your hands come up like this. You start from here, interview stance, you then you go to here like this. Come in at us, we, we put our hands up, okay? We can go into this position, boom. I drive into their chest or whatever, but the idea is I wrap, my hand goes up underneath and I strike, okay? That is the basic foundation of this attack. So first thing you wanna do is you wanna put your hands out in front of you. Say, hey, 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 I don't, I'm not interested in this. I don't care what you have to say or whatever, I don't care. I don't want any of it, you know, I have no interest. Okay, that's the first step, okay? Try to de-escalate the situation if you can, okay? If somebody wants to hit you bad enough, they're gonna hit you. That's the truth, okay? Try to de-escalate the situation. If their hands start to come up like they like his are right now, that's when we go to this position here. A lot of times they don't wanna throw a punch when they know their ha your hands are already ready to go, okay? They don't wanna throw a punch a lot of times when you just do the interview stance. These are very important principles, okay? So he puts his hands up, boom, my hands go up, okay? So the only one we're working on today is he throws a round punch, I come in, I'm gonna claw his eyes. Come a little bit here. I claw his eyes like this, I wrap. This is called overhook, okay? I wrap. I can also grab here, I can grab a skin if I want to. See that? All right, or grab a shirt. I'm gonna go here like this. If he starts throwing a punch with this other hand, Go ahead, round punch, boom, I can cover that. See that? And I can hook that, grab on my other hand, and I can keep going. I only want to do it until he's no longer a threat. Okay, we we always say follow up till we're no longer a threat. All right, so I'm in my position, start from the beginning. Hands are together, his hands are down. Okay, he brings his hands up, your hands go up. He throws a punch, I come in and I go to this position. I'm right over, over hook his arm and I push his head back. Now when I do this, he doesn't have a lot to go with here, okay? He throws another, if he wants to throw a punch, you can go here, but your hand can come right back into this position here. You see that? This is it. This should take care of the situation, okay? If it doesn't, I do what they call a, a cave, I call it a caveman trap. He throws the punch, boom, like this. I bring his head back, he tries to throw another punch. I cover first, I wrap that hand, and look at my arm. I grab this like this, and then I'm hitting him like this. See that, and I here, if I need to, I'll rip his ear, okay? Smash the side of his head like this, okay? And then he's gonna fall, okay? If I need to in this position, okay? I can hit him here, I can hit him in the groin, okay? I hit him a couple times, he falls to the ground, I get out of there. You need to be observant about what's around you, okay? That's the first key. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Stop walking down the street with a phone in your hand, okay? Number two, use your gut instincts. If you feel like somebody is wanting to hurt you, you can sense when somebody is bad. You can sense when something's not right. Use your gut instincts. Try to get out of there. Try to avoid the situation. 99% of the time, you can avoid the situation. It's that 1%, depending on where you're at, you gotta pay attention to where you're at, you gotta pay attention to what's going on, okay? So that, that's very important. Then third, finally, if, if you have to deal with the situation, you can't avoid the situation, get an interview stance, okay? Get an interview stance. Tell them, I am not interested, okay? If you start batting back and forth verbally with this person and stuff, you're, you're turning into them and you're just getting as bad as them and you're, go, you're going to their level. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the situation where the guy's person's out of their mind 
and they want to fight because they've got some reason maybe you look like somebody that beat them up in their third grade okay so you know that that's the thing you understand you need to take charge of the situation know you're in a threat know that you're under in a violent altercation okay and then go to the interview stands boom okay if they still proceed you bring your hands up okay be ready you can deal with attacks a lot a lot better if your hands are up like this than if your hands stay down and you're bumping chest and you're letting them bully you and you're letting them okay your job is you are allowed to protect yourself interview stance fighting stance okay you deal with the attack you try to penetrate the attack if i back off okay and if somebody starts swinging at me guess what it, you can try to block all you want okay they're gonna get one in they're gonna slip one in on you okay so the key is is that you've got to be able to be able to penetrate their their attack wrap them up and hit them in the right spots okay to to, de, to de-escalate the situation so you can walk away okay is this a foolproof thing no you've got to train this you've got to train this with a partner but i'm giving you a, a very good clear-cut way to deal with an attacker okay this is your first step my name's sean elders i hope you have a great day train it make it yours have a good day